In this video, we're going to look at editing post processors and making simple changes to the post processor. Now, I've already programmed just a real simple rectangle here and have the code here previewed on the right. Now, let's say we want to make some changes to this code or to the way that Bobcad creates this code. Let's say here where the program number line is, let's say we want to eliminate this comment. And also, let's say we want to add a pause to the tool change that occurs down here. So what we need to do is get to the post processor. Now to do that, it's pretty simple. Over here under milling stock where we have the post name, in this case this post that we're looking at is Haas VF Revision 1. We'll right click, go to edit, and then click select. This gives us a list of all of our post processors. Now it's definitely best when making changes to make a copy of that post processor so that you're not changing the original in case any mistakes are made. So what we'll do is we'll come here to the HasVF, right click, go to copy, and then right click in here and go to paste. And we get our copy of the HasVF. I'm going to right click on this and rename. And we're just going to call this revision 2. You can give it any name that you want. We'll right click on the file and choose open with. And what you want to do is open this file with notepad or any text editor for that matter. Now this is the actual post processor that controls the code that's output. Let's go ahead and take a look at this for a second. It's, it's broken down by line number. Here we'll see 0, file header, 1, start a program, 0, 2, start a file standard, 3, tool change, and so on. The first couple hundred lines are like this and then we get down to a lot of questions about the code whether or not if X is modal or if Y is modal or if Z is modal so there's a lot of things here that it asks you for questions that you can change to a Y or an N as well as a numerical value depending on what the question is well let's go look at this for a second on the code that outputs We'll close this out. So first we want to get rid of this program number comment. So what we want to do is go to the post processor. I'll bring that back up on the screen. And what the best thing to do is scroll down in your post to line 26. And this is a debug mode. We can see set debug is set to debug underscore off. We can change that to debug on and save the file. Now I'll just minimize this window. And then when we post in Bobcad, oh, we're still using the Rev1 here. Let's select the Rev2 that we had just created. When we post in Bobcad, what it does is it gives us what line number each block of code is coming from. So in this case, this program number and the comment that's next to it that says program number comes from line 0. So we'll bring up our post. And we'll scroll up to line 0, the file header. So here's O in quotations and then a comma. All of these values are separated by commas. So anything in quotations is hard output. So let's look at this. If we want to make this say hello instead of O, We'll switch back to our Bobcat and post. We could see now where that O was. It says hello. Let's go ahead and put that back to an O. Now we want to get rid of the comment. So we'll make that an O. So it goes comma, program block one, comma, comment start, comma, program number in quotations, and then a comment end. So these are what's called variables, like comment start and comment end. They do certain functions. Everything in quotations is hard output. Let's say that we get rid of the quotations and where it says program number. So we'll just delete those and then save the file and post again. Now you can see all that's left are the two comment marks. So we come back and delete the comment start and comment end. Now let's look at the tool change that we want to add a pause. 
that comes from in this case block 2 so it says T1 MO6 let's say we want to pause right after this happens we'll go back to the post that comes from block 2 if we look it's outputting some comments if we scroll down in here there's our T MO6 the T is also a variable that outputs the tool change code with the number so T1 or T2 then MO6. Let's say we want to put in a pause after this. The N comma is a line number. And then we want M00. And let's put in comment brackets pause. Then we'll click on file save and post the code again. Now I could see after my T1 MO6 we get the M00 pause. So mo changing most codes is about that simple. If we look at the post, all of these variables are in a list. If you go through your Windows Explorer, go to your Program Files folder, then Bobcat Cam, V24, so let's go to C, Bobcad Cam Data, Bobcad Cam V24, Posts, then Mill. This is the same for Lathe as well. In here, you'll find a file called Post Variables. If you open this, it gives you a list of all the variables that are used in the post processor or that can be used in the post processor and what they do. So you can use that list to find variables if you need one. And most changes are just as simple as changing things in quotations. And most of the variables are named pretty much what they do, like spindle on. Now these variables get their information on what codes they are from the bottom of the post processor. If we scroll down, let's say that we do a find for spindle. We can look through the code. There should be a prefix for it, so we'll look for prefix. So here we can see that there's a list of prefixes. Coolant mist, air, oil. So these can be changed in here. I believe our spindle on is probably an MO5. So that would be in quotations. There we go. Spindle forward, spindle reverse, and spindle off. So you can see that these lines have the M codes that control these at the end of the line. So that's where our, our variables get those values from. The other place that the values can come from is within the software when the user enters parameters. Like side allowance or total depth, that's where the variable gets the information from. So it's either from within the post processor or from within a field entered by the user. Now, once you've made the changes that you want to your post processor, you want to make sure to turn off debug mode so we'll scroll back up to our line 26 and set debug mode to off. Then go to save and close the post. That'll turn off the debug comments that are output and then you'll see just the changes that you've added to the post. It's that simple.